Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about all things grammar. If you saw my last video when I was talking about all things spelling, I showed you guys and kind of talked to you a little bit about how I just use the McGuffey readers as a primary thing for not just reading but also spelling, but also how I incorporate the spelling books using the McGuffey's Revise and the original. So I'll have that video linked down below if you want to go check that out. Today I'm going to be talking about Harvey's grammar. I'm going to be giving another and a closer in-depth look at gentle grammar. Love it, love it. And then also a look at the bookmarks. Again, another up-close look at these, even though I've talked about these a lot on my channel. Just an incredible, valuable resource that I had to share again. I'm gonna talk about just a couple of other things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to teaching our kids grammar and everything like that. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So these are some of my favorite grammar resources. I have shared these before, so I'm going to come back to these in just a minute. This is something that I haven't really shared in depth on my channel before, and that is the Harvey's Elementary Grammar and Composition, as well as the Harvey's Revised English Grammar. This is definitely more for high school advanced. This is definitely for elementary, not quite that first, second, third grade level yet. Uh, this is definitely for, you know, definitely middle school or elementary years. I have used this very lightly, but because it is for more of the upper grade, I haven't incorporated it into an actual formal grammar curriculum. I did want to mention it though, because if you do have that probably 11, 12, 13 year old uh, that you're ready to dive in deep for grammar and you want a non-consumable, incredibly sound, beautifully done, gentle approach to grammar, 100% recommend. I did get this uh, when I was on Mott Media's website. I ended well, Honestly, I got them thrifted, but I researched them all on Mott Media. And when I was on Mott Media um, learning about the McGuffies, I also got these thrifted. But I also went down the rabbit trail, and I mentioned this when I was talking about my spelling on my spelling video that when I discovered the McGuffies, I went onto Mott Media's website and discovered that they had grammar, they had math, and all these beautiful, beautiful books. So I ended up picking this up thrifted. Um, however, we are not using it right now because it's a little bit too advanced for my kiddos. However, with that being said, we have gone through the first couple of lessons. It's just not something that I do formally yet, if that makes sense at all. Before we get into these, I did want to show you what we use every single day just because this is more hands-on actively what we're using. <laughs> anyway, we're using the Gentle Grammar Level 1. We use this on a weekly basis now instead of a daily basis. I found that using our McGuffey readers and incorporating just talking about grammar and using our bookmarks, it is beautiful. It's a beautiful combination using these with the McGuffey's to the point where I now only do this maybe one lesson a week and I break up that lesson. So when we started this, I used to have him do an entire lesson a day. That was before I came across the bookmarks. So now that we use the bookmarks and incorporate these into our everyday lessons, I found that just having him do a few problems a day, so one lesson per week works out beautifully. It's just enough practice to where by the end of the week he's mastered this concept and he's mastered it in real life reading using the McGuffey readers. So for an example, for let's say um, today is Saturday, so on Monday's lesson, this is what he's going to be ready for, lesson 34. He's going to read this little section and then write answers to these questions. So what is the color of the first duck? He's going to answer that. What is the color of the second duck? How many white ducks are there? So this is the lesson 34 continued. So for Monday, he's just going to answer those three questions and that's it for Monday. On Tuesday, he's going to answer number four and five. How many ducks in all? What are they doing? Now for me, I don't have him answer them in one word things. I have him answer the questions in whole sentences. So he's doing the copy work, reading, things like that. Um, and then parts of objects. So this is the part, let me show you here really quick. Parts of objects, so to the teacher. In all cases, present the object and ask the child to point out the parts or state the qualities. So write these sentences. The bell has a handle, the bell has a clapper, and things like that. So I break this up, again, the lesson per week, and it makes it, you can do this in under five minutes that way, and it spreads it out. So that's that, and then how we do grammar on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is, I'm gonna open up to the uh, to the part that my second grader is on because this is more second grade related. My first grader uses these bookmarks as well, um, but I don't know, I, um, I do most of them intentionally with my second grader. So more about the little chimney sweep. So my son is going to read this, and on Monday, he's going to go through the whole story. We're going to go through our problem words, or I should say our study words. And this is, again, like I mentioned in my last spelling video, this will become his spelling list for the week to the 
point where he will have mastered all of these harder words at the end of the week. I love doing it this way. Again, I'll link my spelling video down below where I was talking about how using this as a spelling list, seeing them in the story really makes the spelling list come to life and that where they're able to really master those words quickly. So for grammar, the something that I do every single day is we'll read the story and then we'll do a grammar comprehension check-in, but we'll also do the grammar check-in. I will have say, okay, what was something capitalized and why? So we'll go through and find something that was capitalized. For example, let's find something here. So for example, it would be, why is God uppercase? Well, God is always uppercase, but for something like back here, we would try to find a name, like names would always be uppercase. And then for the, another grammar check-in would be find a plural S, find a possessive S, find a common noun, find a proper noun, find a pronoun, adjective, verb. So we will go through pretty much this entire checklist and since he's already read it, it's very easy for him to quickly go through the list, find all the parts of speech, find all the um, nouns, pronouns, things like that, and then move on. And then we'll also do a comprehension check-in where I'll ask him what is the setting, what are the characters, genre, who told the story, summarize the story. So I'll ask him at the end of the story, so tell me something that happened in the beginning, how did it end? And then I'll say, well, how did the story end and how would you continue the story if you were the author, things like that. So a comprehension check-in and grammar check-in. I have found that with using these bookmarks, it's really all we need right now in the first and second grade level to the point where he'll do these grammar check-ins after reading the story and he'll be very fluent in the parts of speech within the story to the point where now when he goes and gets a book that he wants to read, he can open this up. He can also do the parts of speech, um, you know, pick those out in the book, make it come alive for him as well. And now when he goes back and he does his Christian light education, um, he still does the Christian light education language arts um, here and there. It's very, very simple and easy to the point where he just opens it up right now for review because I feel like you can take multiple light units and scrunch it all down to what you really need to know within these few bookmarks. So even though we still use the language art program lightly, definitely not every single day. These are just wonderful. And I have found that everything that he needs to know within this grade level is really in here. Reading fluency, practice spelling, everything is all, all included. And I just love the affordability of it is too. That's a huge pro is how affordable these resources are. So very, very appreciative to that. And again, this actual reader bookmarks are non-consumable. You can use them over and over again. I will typically, because the readers are in book, I will keep the grammar check-in and the comprehension check-in. I will keep them right in the book where when he's ready. So after he's done with the story on Monday, he'll be able to go through those bookmarks and we'll go through them together if he needs help. But honestly, he just enjoys going through the checklist himself. He talks about it out loud. If I'm working with my first grader or my preschooler or toddler, <laughs> He will go through those and he uh, really, really enjoys the bookmarks as well. So that is the basis of what we do every single day, incorporating grammar into our day-to-day -day thing. And the same thing is going to go for, as I mentioned in my last spelling video, when it comes to grammar, honestly, the best way to learn about the different parts of speech and the way things are when it comes to reading stories is by actually getting the books out and reading them aloud so they can see that and feel that and hear that come to life. So. That is what we do for grammar. I am gonna go ahead and give you guys a look here, one second, at the Harvey's Elementary Grammar and Composition since I was going to do a designated video on this. But I did wanna give you a quick look. Are you gonna play with the bookmarks? <laughs> oh, she put this over here. That reminded me, I have this as well. This is the Usborne. I shared this in my homeschool mom resource video. Uh, but this is the Usborne Better English Grammar and Punctuation. There is an elementary version of the Grammar and Punctuation. It's like an illustrated guide. Highly recommend that one this is just one that we had out on our table um, but if your little ones need extra practice this is like spot the adjectives you have adding adjectives and it's just a great little practice book so if you need some help or if your child is a visual learner I highly recommend the Usborne English books I'll have both of the ones that I have and love linked down below if you do want to go check those out for um, again that visual learner who might want something more hands-on so anyway back to the <laughs> actual Harvey's elementary grammar I have a little uh my baby's up here, so if you see if you see little things flying around, that's that's why. So to give you an idea of what the first few lessons are going to look like, so for part one, you're going to be studying objects. The first part is what are the senses? We have five senses: seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, smelling. When we see, feel, taste, or smell things or hear sounds, we are said to perceive them. 
So let's talk about perception. You, the first lesson is always going to talk about gravitation, what draws things down to the center of the earth. We cannot perceive this force, but we are conscious of it. That is, we know such a force must exist. We are conscious of many other things that we cannot perceive, such as love, hatred, joy, and sorrow. So talking about some bigger concepts. And then the uh, next part is an object is anything we can perceive or of which we may be conscious of. So then we have what a word is and then any questions. So that's all you're going to learn for the first lesson. Then you're going to go to how many senses have we? Name them. Name some things that we can perceive. Name some things that we cannot perceive. Two, you have definitions. So what is language, spoken language, written language, grammar, English grammar, uh, questions and things like that. Lesson three, we go into the sentence. Then we have sentence making. I also did get the teacher's answer key, and this is, I wouldn't say 100% necessary, but it does give you the answer to all of those questions. So when you talk about objects, uh, page three, when you talk about a sentence, a sentence is a group of words making complete sense, it, sense or expressing a complete thought. It may also be called a proposition. So sentence making, this is going to give you ideas for how to make those sentences. Uh, that when it comes to here. It does start out with some simple concepts. By the time you get to, let's say lesson 29, you have like the adjective element and you go all the way to the back here, order of parsing, models for parsing, descriptive adjectives, um, just some really, really advanced, almost I wanna say like high school, college level content in the back of the elementary grammar course. So this is would probably take you all the way through. But this, on top of the Harvey's Revised English Grammar, would be the only two grammar books that you really, really need. Well guys, thank you so much for being here and for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing and hearing about what we do for grammar and how we incorporate it using the McGuffey's, just other books and other wonderful resources that we have just loved in our homeschool. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day, whatever you're doing. And until my next video, God bless. Bye guys.